I've noticed that you don't hear the word love being used very much in business pitches. So maybe we'll redress that balance a little bit today. My name's Janine Charles, and I'm the founding director of an organization called Nurture and Learning, a community interest company based in Oxford, and we work with adoptive families. I'd like us to think for a moment about the emotional landscape of a child being removed into care and from care into adoption. For the vast majority of those children, home was an unpredictable, frightening place where the child's needs were not responded to or where people called parents were to be feared and not trusted. Often for these children, there is significant trauma and developmental delay. Children entering adoption with that landscape as their inner world find it very hard to adjust to a safe and loving environment. Their terrible experiences are in the past, but anger, mistrust, fear, and trauma are in the here and now. Adoptive parents struggle to coexist with the trauma, let alone to attach to a child like that. And the symptoms of early disruption that emerge as a range of behaviors that are very difficult to live with, failure to attach, significant regression, sexualized behavior, outright aggression, oppositional and defiant behavior. Your usual parenting rules do not apply. And despite the optimism in the, in the system, you can't just love these children better. Parents suffer relationship breakdown, ill health, absence from work. Children fail to thrive at home or in school. Long-term education and mental health, health outcomes are very poor. Families break down, and in the worst cases, children get returned to care. Schools struggle to know how to teach children who are vacant, hurt other children in school, or just too scared to sit still. Love alone cannot heal those wounds. Even the presence of love, being in a loving home, can be so unfamiliar as to generate a feeling of suspicion in the child and an impulse to recreate the chaos of the past. And time is not the great healer it's claimed to be, because often, over time, greater difficulties surface. Exhausted parents experience secondary trauma or the re-triggering of their own childhood experiences, and it's not long before everyone in the family is struggling to remember what love means. To heal these wounds, the new family has to be able to acknowledge the pain of the past, both the child's and their own, and be brave enough to allow it to surface, be skilled enough to manage that trauma, and to survive it intact themselves. My project arose from my own insights into the life of an adopter and the adopted child. That's my one there on, the, on your left. And Nurture and Learning have created and tested a range of interventions and support for adoptive families. Our program is carefully designed to help children access the present, integrate their past, and prepare for the future. We aim to help parents thrive, survive, and support their children's journey, and to connect home and school so that we can support teachers in working more effectively with the needs of these children. Our approach focuses on the child's creative potential and the power of images to speak for them. We work through the arts, storytelling, music and drama, combined with therapeutic approaches, outdoor learning particularly, food and community. We learn through experience, reflection and peer support. We aim to model for our children the way we overcome challenge ourselves, express our feelings and support each other in the group. And the children know that they share the common experience of adoption. We also provide teacher training and reporting for parents to assist them in getting additional support. We've piloted a parent group with therapeutic support where parents said they were far able to go far further in their self-reflection and learning than they had through other support systems. We're generating significant research and the outcomes are being written up. The first paper is due shortly for publication and our reputation for innovative parent-led approaches to supporting adopters is growing. So what are the signs of healing and recovery in the child? Um, well, I asked my nine-year-old, Maya, what, what the answer to that was, and she said, Mummy, I can have eye contact with people now. 
I thought that was very astute. And I would add to that, experiencing pleasure in other people, being able to stay with difficult feelings, falling asleep, being able to sleep through the night, reduced anxiety, being able to learn, being your own chronological age, not feeling much older or acting like a baby, wanting to stay in a relationship with the parent enough to do what you say and to say sorry when things go wrong. And in parents' healing, we're looking for positive relationship experiences with the child, taking pleasure in being together, reduced stress, and increased ability to cope with difficult behavior, understanding of their child, and more awareness of their own story and the impact that has on the relationship. Our data for our first year of, year of trading is that we've provided 3,150 hours of voluntary intervention, 637 sessions so far. And our signs of healing are that 67% of parents saw an improvement in attachment, 84% had seen an improvement in confidence in the child, and 100% of parents said their children had fun. I'd like to end with these words from Dr. Bruce Perry. He says that in order to understand how children heal, we need to understand how they learn to love, how they cope with challenge, and how stress affects them. By recognizing the destructive impact that violence and threat can have on the capacity to love and work, we can come to better understand ourselves and to nurture the people in our lives, especially the children. Nurture and Learning aims to build attachment, attunement, and repair in adoptive families. Thank you.